The Etheria Society proudly presents this series of podcasts in tribute to the 50th anniversary of the giving of the 12 blessings. First blessing, blessed are they who work for peace. The co-hosts were the Right Reverend Dr. Richard Lawrence, the Executive Secretary of the European Headquarters, and the Reverend Brian Kniep, the Executive Secretary of the American Headquarters. Blessed are they who work for peace. In these times of unrest in your world, the workers for peace are indeed thrice blessed, for these ones, by their toil, sacrifice their own bliss. By their interest in the suffering of their brothers, they sacrifice their peace. Blessed are these ones at this time. In these times of unrest in your world, the workers for peace are indeed thrice blessed. Not even once blessed, but thrice blessed in this case. In other words, the three aspects of working for peace are thrice blessed. Three aspects in this case, of course, naturally are the creative, the preservative, and that which strikes a balance between the two. You know, there is a trinity in all things. There, is, there are the three sexes in all things. That which is neither sex or neither type of magnetism, that which is female magnetism or preservative magnetism, and that which is male magnetism or creative magnetism. That's why Jesus here says that the workers for peace are thrice blessed. Well, let's all prepare ourselves. Let's all again close our eyes. Just go within and bring into your mind as much of an aspect of peace as we can. Slow the breathing, which tends to slow the mental activity. Try to stop thinking about yesterday or tomorrow, and think about the now. Think about peace. Then think for a moment about they who work for peace, and realize how difficult a job they have in these days upon earth and really want to send them your help, to send them some power and some love and some energy to help them in their most essential and difficult task in these days. And so let's all now raise our hands and just feel the white light in the palms of the hands and the heart center, and send this outwards. Blessed are they who work for peace. Almighty Father, of all creation, let your light flow through this world now. Let it shine into the hearts and minds of men now so that all may look within and see the glory of thine everlasting being. O Spirit of spirits, let your love flow through the hearts and minds of man now, so that he may look within and see the great and wondrous glory his divine heritage. The second blessing. Blessed are the wise ones. The co-hosts were the Reverend Paul Nugent and the Reverend Richard Quesada.
So indeed, blessed are the wise ones, and the wise ones should have your blessings, not because you may not be a wise one, oh no, you may be a wise one yourself. You may be a person who's spreading the light of this wisdom yourself, certainly you may, but when you send a blessing to the wise ones, you are helping again the mass of the wise ones and they in turn are the group soul or the group consciousness, I prefer to call it, from the wise ones helps you in turn. And you deserve to be helped because you're activating the law. It's the duty of all of us to send our blessings to these ones who, are, who have given wisdom to the world. People like Buddha, Jesus, Sankachara, Yogananda, Patanjali, Confucius, Laotse, and so on and so on. And there are many, many dozens of them. Some great names, some world famous, some not so famous. Now visualize that white living light a light that is purely spiritual, radiating from the chakras, from your palms, and from your heart. Blessed are the wise ones, for they walk through a dark and ignorant world, spreading their light. O oh, adorable children, Children of God, walk bravely forward to your salvation. Look neither to one side nor the other, but straight ahead into the very face of God and contact this mighty light so that it may shine upon you, so that it might impregnate you forever. Be this now. And by now, adorable children, little children, I am here with you. I will lead you into this state if you but hold out your hand to me. Adorable ones, go with God. The third blessing, blessed are they who love. The co-hosts were the Reverend Gary Blaze and the Reverend Paul Nugent. Third blessing, blessing are they who love. So let's begin as we've begun the two previous blessings by bringing ourselves to a point of stillness, by closing the eyes, and placing the palms downwards upon the knees with the spine erect, the head tilted slightly backwards. And let's visualize coming down now from the ethers of space above a wonderful living white light. And see this entering the top of your head, charging the brain as we take it down through the neck and the shoulders and outwards into our heart center this living white light of God, expanding in the heart center. And now let us think down beneath our feet, way down to the very Logos of the Mother Earth, and there let us visualize a violet flame. And now, in all humility, let us request this violet flame to come upwards through our feet and the lower part of our body, and take it right the way up through and around the body and up above the top of your head as high as you can visualize and see and feel yourself being cleansed by this soft violet flame of the Mother Earth. Now let's raise our hands as we tune in to the vibration of the Master Jesus as he delivers the heading to the third blessing. Blessed 
are they who love. For they are the disciples of God. Closing the eyes, raising our hands in prayer, again visualizing the white light flowing down through us, this light of God that we are here to manifest and radiate into our world. And let's all join now in the prayer given at the end of this blessing by the Master Jesus. O mighty God, who is the creator of all things, we pray that your light may shine through us all so that we may transmit this unto the world. As in the the great spiritual freedom, if we were to experience freedom, we would need to be able to learn to love all things equally. And we can't do that with possession. We can't do that with any of the other lower manifestations of love. So that, again, is an example of the great importance that the Master talked about with love. In fact, that the Masters have said, and I think this is an incredible point, that our divine love should be so powerful, so radiant, so all-encompassing within our heart that hatred and anger and anything else like that doesn't have a place to live. And we can always gauge, I guess, how effective and what kind of a place love has in our heart by, if we're honest with ourselves, gauging some of the other emotions that somehow find its way into our mind and, and expression. But that's the, uh, and a good example about how the importance that they think of love. Of course, our master, when he talked about love, to differentiate it between the emotion or basic love, he would spell it out, L-O-V-E. Swami Sivananda talked about cosmic love, to differentiate between the, the basic emotional love that uh, humanity has become familiar with throughout the ages. Well, there you go again, right here in the text. For such sacrifice as this can only come from the hearts of the cosmic lovers, and how they love not any man because they love all. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you, Gary. Please visit us on the web at www.atherius.org.